Looking for magic carbs? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of Pokémon singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to New Historic. Seeing the maturation of the historic format over time has been exciting, but we recently got to thinking, have we lost sight of what got us here in the first place? Is this truly honoring the historical traditions of magic? Not exactly, but it could. It's time to take historic back to how things were really meant to be. In the olden days, a deck could be as small as 40 cards, and you could play as many of a card as you wanted, not just four, and there weren't any banned cards to worry about. Doesn't that sound great? This is such an obviously great way to play, we've even enabled all access so that everyone can participate. We're still debating the fate of existing old historic queues and events, but in the meantime enjoy the new look of historic here. Have fun! Build a 40 card deck with no limit on copies of a card, every card on MTG Arena is legal and available, whether it's in your collection or not. Yes, even that card. Play as much as you want. And today's deck is gonna be a mono red combo deck titled Nulamog, featuring 23 basic mountains, 14 copies of Stone Coil Serpent, 2 copies of Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, and a Tibbles Trickery. So our game plan is very simple, mulligan until we can find a Tibbles Trickery, then ideally we keep 2 basic mountains, 1 copy of Stone Coil Serpent, on turn 2 we hold priority in full control, cast Stone Coil Serpent for 0, counter it with our own copy of Tibbles Trickery, which is then guaranteed to hit one of our Ulamogs, which will get cast, exile two of the opponent's permanents, including lands potentially, and then we get a 10-10 indestructible that when it attacks, defending player exiles the top 20 cards of their library, and in a 40-card format it only takes two attacks from Ulamog to win the game. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and we managed to find our Tibbles Trickery, so no need to mulligan. Opponents took a mulligan. Usually when you see your opponents mulliganing, it means that they're also trying to trickery us. Since most of the other streamlined decks don't really have to mulligan that often. Although we do see Watery Grave, so could still be some sort of mill deck. I've seen... A couple different decks so far. The Ruin Crab deck's pretty popular. Aha, uh -huh, our opponent with a Treasure Hunt Zombie Infestation deck, I like it. So, Trickery on Stone Coil. And we'll exile two lanes. Now, our opponent does seem to be playing more than 40 cards, but they're still gonna probably get decked before they manage to do anything impactful here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Let's take a mulligan. And find the trickery here. There we go. And then we'll keep two alliance, two stone coils and a trickery. And our opponent's playing the Stitcher Supplier builds that's trying to mill multiple copies of Creeping Chill. I've definitely lost to this deck with a turn to Ulamog before, just because they can potentially still block with the Stitcher Supplier and mill those uh, Creeping Chills after we get Ulamog in play and drain us to death before we mill them out. And then against the Stitcher Supplier decks, we'll have to wait and see if they have a second land or not. I will block, because they will eventually get to mill me with the Supplier, so might as well prevent a bit of damage. So, two more Creeping Chills. And our opponent does seem to be missing a second lane, so we can punish them here. Just gotta avoid milling our second Ulamog. And there he is. At least we don't trigger Supplier by exiling it. Now, the game's not over yet. If our opponent finds a land here, they could still be in it. But now I think it's gonna be game over. Since we get to mill them for 20. Cards also get exiled, so they don't trigger Creeping Chill. And now if they play a Supplier, their library will be gone. I guess there's still a chance they would have two copies of Creeping Chill, but yeah, even with double Creeping Chill, we would still be at two. So, on to the next one. Uh, 
All right, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Happy to have our trickery already. Although the funny thing is, if you're up against a mill deck that's playing all ruin cramps, which this seems to be, then uh, you would actually prefer to mulligan a bunch to have more cards in library, so you're less likely to get decked soon. But can't really mulligan a hand with trickery in it. Opponents also potentially playing green, so they might be playing with Gaia's Blessing as an anti-mill kind of uh, technology. One Ulama gone. And against the Ruin Crab deck, I like exiling the Ruin Crabs as opposed to the lands. So full control, Stone Coil, into Trickery. And then we'll see if we're fast enough here. There's Ulamog. Two cramps gone. Sadly, we cannot play Gaia's Blessing in our deck, otherwise we could hit it with Tibal's Trickery. Right, so they've got triple crab online. So that mills us for nine. If their last card is a fetch lands, we could be dead. But most decks I've seen so far haven't been playing with Fabled Passage. And let's see what the green is for. Grow Spiral, apparently. I guess it also makes sense with Ruin Crab. And Oko Thief of Crowns, because why not? Alright, let's see if they have a Fabled Passage. Or maybe... Grow Spiral and two lands. They don't, and their opponent explodes. We're gonna exile 20 more cards, and the opponent's gonna draw from an empty library onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Let's take a mulligan, and we've got a keeper, and we'll put that Ulamog on the bottom. Opponent also on the trickery deck, I think. Being on the draw might actually be an advantage, because the opponent can cast a turn to Ulamog, exile one of my lands, one of their own, but then we should still be able to trickery before they completely mill us out, and that should win the game. So Stone Coil into Trickery. So this is the first time I've actually faced a true mirror match where the opponent's playing more or less exactly the same build. There are numbers of uh, basic mountains and Stone Coil Serpents and Ulamogs might be slightly different. And yeah, the opponent has to exile their own land here. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Opponent exiles 20 cards, gotta hope we have an Ulamog left in the deck, and since we mulliganed and put one on the bottom, we know that's a guarantee here. Stonequill for zero. Trickery. And there's Ulamog, which exiles Ulamog and Mountain. And now we should be able to win. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a mulligan. And another mulligan. Let's see if we can find trickery. Not yet. Uh-oh. Well, looks like we have a bit of a bust here. Pass a turn. Don't love my chances. Opponent with a Lava Glide pathway. Well, at least we've got a lot of cards in library in case we're up against the mill deck. Stone Quill for one. So it looks like a trickery deck to me. Do I hold my mountain? I think I do. Opponent's gonna pass. There's a serpent. I guess I can play mountain now. Although we're still pretty far from having the trickery, so it's probably not worth it yet. So 
Stone Cold for zero. And we'll see how the opponent built their trickery deck. Well, they're playing more than one trickery, so they have a fail rate in their deck, since they could hit another trickery at any point. Ulamog forced to exile their own permanence here. Of course, the advantage of playing multiple trickeries is that you don't have to mulligan as much. But then you also have to diversify your win conditions, since if you uh, only have Ulamog, then you're about as likely to hit an Ulamog as you are another trickery if your entire deck is Stone Coils. And looks like our trickery is gone here, so that's going to be game. GG's. We'll attack for one to send a message. But sadly we cannot win. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and we've got a keeper. Let's see what he points up to. Bushuka bog, all right. Can run out a 1-1 one, one stone coil. I haven't encountered any Thoughtseize decks yet, but those could be effective at disrupting our trickery. Although then we still have the backup plan of attacking with stone coil serpent. Also back Huntmaster. I guess they've got a Rotting Regisaur deck, perhaps. Play Stone Coil into Trickery. And then I probably exile the Huntmaster. And Bushuka Bog. And then our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a Keeper. Our opponent playing a 115 card deck. And it's going to be a Stitcher Supplier deck. Alright, so they're metagaming against Author Mill decks by playing more than 40 cards. And yeah, that's going to be pretty effective against our Ulamog plan, I'm afraid. But we can go after their lands to try and slow them down. Problem is, it's gonna take a lot of attacks from Ulamog to win the game. And our opponent can just chum block with Supplier and eventually drain us to death with the Creeping Chills. So, yeah, I'm kind of liking the opponent's build. They've got the Creeping Chill against other mill decks. But maybe they just kept a land light hand and they scooped it up. Because, yeah, they could have still potentially beaten us if they could play a couple suppliers here, but guess I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keeper. Been pretty lucky to get Trick Rainer opening hands. But with a London Mulligan, it's usually not too difficult to find it before it's too late. Turn one Stitcher Supplier. Opponent playing a 40 card build. And there's a Creeping Chill. I like my chances against a 40 card build more than the 100 plus card build. And then against the Supplier deck, I typically like exiling the lands as opposed to the Ruin Crab deck where I want to exile the Ruin Crabs. It's another Creeping Chill. If they attack, I will trade, since that exchange is going to happen at some point. Alright, two more Creeping Chills. They've got two cards in hand. Hmm. Yeah, now I'm starting to wonder if I want to go after their suppliers instead of the lanes. It's a close call. Two more Creeping Chills, so we're at two. Yeah, I think this game's over. And I pretty much have to exile the suppliers. Opponent has 21 cards left. 
but the creeping chill triggers are still gonna kill me before I can uh, mill them out. So my best bet is that they don't have any suppliers left in hand. Let's find out. They could also miss with Supplier if they play it. Frexian Tower can sacrifice it, so that's gonna be six cards milled. And they found a Creeping Chill. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and no Stonequill Serpents, but we do have Trickery. Hmm. How do we feel about this one? This might be a mulligan. We also have an Ulamog in hand, so if the other one gets milled or we draw it, it's also a disaster. Alright, this is better. And we can put Ulamog to the bottom. So it seems like the metagame is slowly settling into the Stitcher Supplier builds. I wonder if we can exploit it by building some sort of Legion's End deck that can exile a bunch of suppliers at once and Maybe add Thoughtseize for the Tybalt's Trickery decks. As we're up against another Stitcher Supplier deck. Also playing Village Rights as a sack outlet. Well, we've got the turn to Trickery, so maybe being on the play will mean we're fast enough. We know there's an Ulamog at the bottom. And our opponent playing a 40 card version, so two attacks should be enough to mill them out. Alright, two more creeping chills. They also get to block and potentially mill more. So five cards left. So they're gonna mill three, have two cards left, take a draw step. So I don't think they can win anymore now. Since if they play Stitcher Supplier, at most they can deal 3 damage to me. And then they will be dead. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Let's take a mulligan. And this is all we need. Two lands, a Serpent and a Trickery. Alright, so we finally faced a Thoughtseize deck. GG's. We're gonna have to try and win with Stonecoil. I wonder if our opponent's also packing Legion's End. Yeah, opponent's playing exactly the deck I was describing a second ago. Well, we do have more stone coils in the deck, so I wonder what the opponent's win condition will be. Another Legion's End. So they had the Thought Seas for the Trickery, the Legion's End for the creatures, which most decks tend to have only one of each. Alright, a Liliana, Waker of the Dead. Luckily drew not our stone coils, so we're still in it. Do they have another Legion's End? They probably have some Thought Seizes in hand they don't need anymore. Alright, another Legion's End. Well, we need more stone coils here. Just a mountain. I guess I'll keep that in. Hmm. If I keep it in hand, I prevent three damage, but I can play 4 4 Stone Coil if we run it out. So, yeah. Pretty sweet deck from our opponent. And a Necromancia on Stone Coil is gonna close out the game. So, our opponent managed to build a nice control deck. I guess we're still gonna have Ulamog as a win condition in the deck but we're going to need 10 lands to cast it, which is probably not going to happen before Liliana kills us. 
Necromancer also pretty effective in this meta game, although you don't always get to turn three. You think too much. So opponent left me with all lands and Ulamogs. Yeah, it feels like, let's see, I'm at 8, 7 lands, go to 5, go to 2. Yeah, I think I'm going to be one land short of casting Ulamog, even if we draw it. And another Necromantia can get rid of Ulamog, which is our final win condition. And yeah, Liliana's going to take over this game. They did need to draw exactly, you know, Thoughtseize into Legions and into Liliana into Necromantia, so... They probably had a nice uh, sequence of draws as well to draw everything in the right order. But regardless, opponent's pretty much doing what I wanted to try out myself. And that's going to be game. Opponent can ultimate Liliana as well. I can keep discarding to prevent taking three. But we're definitely going to mill before the opponent does. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. We've got a keeper. And let's see what he points up to. Which is really the most interesting part of this format, figuring out what the opponent's trying to accomplish. We've got a swamp into Stitcher Supplier. Find one creeping chill. Of course, one thing to keep in mind about the Stitcher Supplier decks is that they're going to be holding some number of Creeping Chills as well that they're never going to cast. So their hands might not be as powerful as it may appear. So it seems like being on the play is pretty key in this matchup. And then the opponent's luck with milling creeping chills is also very relevant. And they've gotten pretty unlucky so far. Lots of creeping chills there. Not sure what the correct ratio of lands versus Stitcher Supplier versus Creeping Chill is. Opponent's got one card left in library. Don't think that's gonna cut it. Yeah, so if I were playing a Stitcher Supplier deck, I would definitely play more than 40 cards. I guess there's no real point in attacking here. We'll pass a turn. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Let's find trickery, shall we? There it is. Two lands, stone quill, trickery. All according to plan. Just gotta dodge a thought seize or some counter spell. Opponent also with mountain. Huh. If the opponent's also playing the trickery deck, it might be correct to wait and let the opponent ulamog first now i don't have an extra land yet our opponent cycles forgotten cave yeah i want to wait for them to ulamog first but then i will need an extra land and there's the ulamog Opponent has to exile one of their own lands as well. But presumably the opponent only has the one trickery in their deck, so that's the only Ulamog that they'll be casting. All 
All right, we drew an Olamog. So we're definitely a favorite to find a land next turn, but if we don't, it's game over. And my author Ulamog also got exiled here, so that's also game over. All right, well, we played the odds here, but they were not in our favor. Could go for the turn two trickery anyways, and then hope that the opponent doesn't have more than two lanes, but that seems unlikely when they kept a full grip. So I can stone coil into trickery. And then hope my opponent concedes before I actually cast the Ulamog. But sadly, no Ulamogs left in the deck. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Let's find the trickery. Well, we get to keep trickery and a land. Close decision whether we want stone coil or land since we do have more lands in the deck, but I need two lands as opposed to just a one stone coil. All right, so far so good. Can we find a second land? Well, opponent hasn't done anything so far, so they might also be a trickery deck, in which case we don't want a trickery first. So I'm gonna wait. It's going to be also a shepherd into trickery instead. And they're actually playing more than one trickery in their deck, so they hit another trickery, which I guess lets them keep going. So I guess that's the idea. All right, fair enough. And they've got Platinum Angel as their win condition. Are they gonna hit an Ulamog as well? Or is it just Platinum Angels? They are slowly milling their entire deck. Well, this is fascinating. Alright, they finally hit Platinum Angel. So we have to exile the Platinum Angel here with Ulamog. And then I guess my opponent could potentially hit another Platinum Angel to not lose the game. So do I have to wait until they potentially trickery again here? So I can exile double Platinum Angel or do we just hope that they miss? But I mean, they're gonna eventually hit another Platinum Angel, right? So I, I might have to wait a little bit longer and hopefully exhaust all their trickeries. We're at 15. I only really need one attack with Willamog, but if they have another Plantain Mangel in play, it's not gonna work out for me. So they're gonna fire off the trickery. which finds another trickery, so they're kind of doing the milling for me. That resolves. And hits the second Platinum Angel, so this is as good as it's gonna get for me. I can exile double Platinum Angel and I gotta hope they don't put another one in play. So let's go for Stone Coil into Trickery, and we're guaranteed to hit Ulamog. All 
And I can still play Stone Coil, but I guess I'll play a bigger one. Uh, let's see if they can trick her into another Platinum Angel here. No, they don't, and they explode, so patience was key in this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a Mulligan facing a Gigantha deck. Curious to see what that's all about. Might just be a trickery deck. Free rolling Gigantha, although it's probably not getting cast. So we'll keep, and then against trickery, I think keeping extra lands is more important. And yeah, we'll just try and be the second ones to trickery as opposed to the first. Haven't played against someone who slow rolls their Ulamog. But uh, yeah, that would be interesting if the opponent also waited. So they're gonna trickery, they're gonna find Ulamog, they're gonna get one attack, and I gotta hope that their one attack doesn't exile both of my Ulamogs, basically. But if they don't, we should be able to win the game. So currently I would say we're favorites, since we don't have any Ulamogs in hand. That resolves. The sound has disappeared. Opponent is playing more than... 40 cards, I suppose. Uh-oh, we drew an Ulamog. So if they exile the second one, it's game over. And it looks like they didn't, so we should still be able to combo off here. Unless Trickery mills Ulamog with its mill trigger. They're gonna play a 2 2 Stone Coil. So let's go for it. Oh no, we milled Ulamog. That's unfortunate. Yeah, well, there you go. There is a disadvantage to waiting. So that's game. Sadly, drew one of the Ulamogs. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Let's find Trickery. There it is. And then we'll keep one land, one stone coil. Point playing a 250 card deck. So let's see if there's a Stitcher Supplier build. If that's the case, I think we're in trouble. Nope, green-white. Charm stray, alright. Fair enough. How is our charmed stray matchup? I'm not actually so sure. Do we go after the charmed stray or the lanes? I think we go after the lands. And then we do have stone coils in the deck that can eventually be cast as well. But yeah, we're not gonna melt the opponents with Ulamog attacking, so we first kinda need to stabilize. Yeah, Charm Stray might actually beat us. Not our Charm Stray. And we drew the other Ulamog, that's unfortunate. So don't have a good attack. And the opponent's eventually gonna overwhelm us if we don't find a couple Stone Coils to block with. Yeah, the key to this format does seem to be play more than 40 cards, and then not sure what your win condition should be, if it's Stitcher Supplier plus Creeping Chill or apparently Charmed Stray. So next turn it could already do a lot of damage. 
not quite lethal with another charm tree, but also not sure what the blue is for. Bonan gets in there. Yeah, even if we draw Stone Coil now, I'm not sure if it's going to be fast enough. Momentary Blink, I see. Alright, so that's what the blue is for. We're at three. And no Stone Coil, sadly. Let's do one last attack to see what the opponent's working with. Get an idea of what their ratios are. They've got green in there too, not sure what for. Alright. Well, Charm Stray apparently also a thing. So the format's not quite solved just yet. But I'm kind of liking the idea of that uh, Legions and Control deck since a lot of the decks seem to be running only one creature. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. We found our trickery. And let's see what they've got. Turn one, is it a Thoughtseize deck? It is. So that doesn't bode well for us. Lurus is an interesting win condition. If I play Stone Coil, it's just going to get Legions ended, I'm guessing. Another Thoughtseize. And another Thoughtseize. All right. So they do have Lurus as a win condition eventually. This is probably the matchup where I would want a companion like Gigantha. Yeah, I wonder if that actually would have made a difference in that previous game against the Mono Black Control deck. Just uh, play land pass. Opponent's hand must be all Thought Seizes and Legion's ends. Play a 6-6 six, six Stone Coil. Do they have a Necromancia in there too, maybe? Well, we do have 6 lands in play already, so we could potentially hard cast an Ulamog this game. Another Stone Coil. And our opponent is at 12, so they can't really take too many hits to potentially cast something other than Legion's End. Land 7. Is it Necromancia time? Or do we put our companion in hand? It's gonna be Necromancia. Probably named Stone Coil Serpent. So then my only win condition is gonna be Ulamog, but if they have a second Necromancia, that should be game over. Name's Ugin, Spirit Dragon. Well, that's not my win condition. But they do get to see my deck, so the second Necromancia is gonna have a better guess. Land 8. Getting closer to the hard cast Ulamog. So if I had Gigantha, I would have put it in hand and cast it this turn. Since I probably would have waited until 8 mana, so they couldn't Thought Seize it. It's gonna be Lurus. This is probably gonna meet Legion's End. But we're really just hoping for land 10 into Ulamog. Don't know if they have an answer for it. Alright, Lantern. Now we got a top deck Ulamog. There's 2 and 24. Stone Quill for now. Another Necromancia is probably also game over. But my guess is they're just holding Thoughtseize. Alright, there's a Necromancia. 
Is this one probably named Ulamog? Yep. And then we only have Stone Coil left, but they probably have enough Legion's Ends to cover those. Keep land in hand now. Alright, let's play a 12-12 Stone Coil. Thought sees themselves, revealing Triple Legion's End. They've got one to spare. Castle Lothwain as well, so maybe they just wanted to empty their hand. Another Stone Coil, and that's gonna be exiled by Legion's End, and that's gonna be game over. Alright, GG's. So, yeah, having a companion probably would have made a huge difference in this game, so definitely make sure to include Gigantha, the Wellspring, in your deck, or some other companion that you can run. Don't think we can run anything other than Gigantha, though. But yeah, overall this format's been quite fascinating to kind of see develop in front of my own eyes, because the first couple decks were all the Thieves Guild Enforcer mill decks, then people started to adjust with their Creeping Chill decks, which were good against the mill decks. So it's been a pretty wild ride, and I'm curious to see where this meta game develops in the next couple hours. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.